What's going on guys, Philip here and today I'm going to show you how to do a repair install of Windows without your disk. So it's pretty simple, uh, it may seem advanced but yeah, I think you can do it. So yeah, I had a problem with my computer, I had to do a repair install, I couldn't find my Windows 7 disk and had to resort to this option instead. So it's completely legal, virus free, whatever, it's, it's safe. You'll just have to do it the right way. And all your uh, programs and whatever will be saved, your personal data, all my pictures and music and whatever, it was still there after I had done it. You're not reinstalling Windows, you're just doing a repair install. I think this works for all the versions of Windows. I do know that it works for all Windows 7 wor versions, uh, but I don't know if it works for Windows 8 or Vista or XP, I'm not really sure, but I, I do think it will work. But you may have to do some re research on that. So what, you, what you'll want to start off uh, doing is going to this page. I will leave all the links in the description to all the softwares and whatever you, you need. And find a proper ISO file. And with proper I mean that it has to be the same language. And if you have 64-bit, uh, it has to be 64-bit. If you have 32-bit, it has to be 86-bit, you know, it will say on this site right here. So, for instance, I have Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit in Swedish, but it doesn't have any ISO file for that, so I can choose this one, Windows 7 Professional 64-bit. It doesn't have to be the same version, it just has to be the same language and bits. I don't know it's called bits, just bitrate, I don't know. And it may seem odd, but you will kind of unlock the ISO file to make it work for any ver uh, any version, but if it's the wrong language, uh, the installation won't work, and you will have to start over. I didn't don't know this myself when I did the repair installation, so I had to re-download these files. And it took me forever because my internet is, is sucks ass. But anyways, uh, download this file. It will be around two to three gigabytes, and when it, when it's done, you'll have to download something called. EI.CFG removal utility. I will leave a link to that in the description as well. And you'll need to have a program that works with RAR files and ISO files. So I use demo tools for the ISO files and WinRAR for the RAR files. I use the softwares because I I'm used to them. I know how they work. And yeah, if you have any better alternative, you can go ahead and use that as well. As long as it gets the job done. So, what you want to do is to open this EI CFG removal utility. You don't have to do extract, you can just open it. Done with this, no one wants to buy WinRAR. You can then just double click the remover or just run it. Select your ISO file and we get this little window that says success EI.CFG removed. So, what you want to do now is use your ISO software like this, and if you don't know how daemon tools work, I can show you right now. So I think you might have to add a, I think it's called a versional DT unit, and then just press this, for that will say mount, and then you'll have to find your ISO file, like this, double click it, and just choose it to whatever, and then it will say mounting image I think. You will get this user con control window. Press yes, and you will get your installed Windows 7 screen right here. If you don't get it, you can just go to computer, find it right here, and you can just install or open and find the setup file right here. So then just press install, and I don't know if I can actually record the installation so uh, progress, so I'll just show you some images. But what will happen is that um, it will copy some temporary files, then setup will start, and then you'll have to choose whether you want to download important drivers or not. So you should only choose to d download the drivers right away if you have a stable internet connection, because if your internet connection fails during the downloading of the drivers, you'll have to start the installation over. I mean, it doesn't take that long to start it over, but yeah, it can be annoying and I didn't have a stable internet connection at the time so I just chose to not download the drivers and yeah my computer works 
great now and uh, I think you can download the drivers afterwards I'm not sure but yeah so it shouldn't be any problem then after it's downloaded those you'll get the option to choose to upgrade or do a custom installation and you want to choose the upgrade option and you're not actually upgrading your system but yeah it's what the repair install is kind of then you'll have to choose what the version you want and you have to choose the same version as you already have so for instance I have Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit so I choose that one and I pr press next and then we'll, it will check compatibility so if you would choose another another version of Windows it won't work if you have another if you have wrong language it won't work and uh, yeah so then it will uh, go ahead and inst repair install your Windows and yeah your computer may restart it may take several hours then you'll have to enter your CD key and you can uh, activate it at the right away if you want to but you don't have to you can choose to do it afterwards or later so when the installation process was over I had all my softwares shortcut icons or whatever they were all there after that my computer worked and hopefully it will work for you as well if you have any further questions about anything, just go ahead and leave them in the comments. This may seem a bit tricky, but I believe in you. So yeah, I mean, if you have any hesitation, just ask me before you do anything stupid that may destroy your computer. And <laughs> I don't think actually you can do anything too too destructive with this repair install. But yeah, I would think I was watching. Gracias por ver. Good luck with your repair install. And uh, yeah, I wish you find this day, but it's anything next time. Hasta luego!